In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through the nesting tool. This feature will auto fit parts in an area in the most efficient way it can calculate. This is a very powerful way to optimize material usage and toolpath efficiency when laying out and cutting a number of shapes. So with that said, let's have a look at our files. We're going to go over to uh, our open existing file and we're going to choose from our nesting file guides, the Olympic Stadium file. Okay, so now that's loaded in, let's have a look at our nesting options, which is found down here for nesting under the offset and layout part of the design tab. So you'll notice it opens up this form and you can see I've got some nesting options here. And the idea is that I want to select the vectors that are on my sheet and I can then use these to nest. So I can use the options in here to nest these uh, items. So you can see here the first settings of the tool and current settings. So the tool diameter is the diameter of the tool that we're using. In this case, it's a 0.25 inch end mill. The clearance is the distance between the tool, so the tool edge, and the next part. So for example, if I was nesting with the O and the L here, it would be the distance between the cutting edge of the tool and the next part here. The border gap is the gap around the border. So for example, if you're using any sort of clamps or hold downs, you want to make sure that the border gap is big enough that you clear those clamps and hold downs so you don't have the tool come into contact with them. So let's take a look at an example of a nest. So without touching any options here for the moment. We're just going to have one copy and I'm just going to hit apply and I'm hit preview and you'll notice what it's done is it's taken all my letters and it's nested them to the left hand side of the sheet because you notice that the sheet options I've put nesting from the bottom left here. So all of my nesting has occurred on the bottom left upwards and out so you can see that all my letters on the left hand side here but I've still got a lot of space that I can utilize over here so let's look at some of the further options in this form. So let's come to this option here, which is allow parts inside of other parts. Let's check that. We'll reset our preview. And then if we click preview again, you'll notice that this time it's nested those parts within that other part, which is quite useful. It makes for a lot more efficient use of our nesting and efficient use of our space. So we don't have to worry about wasted space in this scenario. Let's reset our preview and we can also look at having uh, multiple copies. So let's say if you wanted two of these signs, what you could do is just change the number of copies, hit apply, hit preview. And now you'll notice that we've got two of these signs and they're both nested within the parts being within the other parts. So for now, let's cancel that. I'm going to have a look at another uh, project. So if we go up to file and open and we're going to choose the uh, nesting example file. And you can see as it loads in, you can see we've got all these parts on the right hand side here. So let's pick this part over here on the right hand side and we're going to go into our nesting tool and you notice that there's a little number 25 and what it's done is it's picked up the last time I used this uh, file on this object I made 25 copies of it and you can notice this over here in the individual part properties it's picked up that I made 25 copies. I am going to increase the clearance in this one just a little bit and I'm going to turn off this option here and let's just have a look at what happens when we click preview on this part. Now you notice if I zoom out that I've actually got another sheet here because what's happened is I wanted 25 copies but they wouldn't all fit onto that one sheet. So the software's automatically created a new sheet where you've got the uh, parts that spilled over all onto that other sheet instead and you can see that they've uh, nested from the bottom left again on that sheet as well. However, we could look at better using our space by looking at the options within the form to uh, utilize most of our space and get that part maybe onto one sheet. So let's have a look at resetting our preview and let's have that part selected and let's look at some of the other parts of this form. So with our vector selected, if we choose this option here to mirror parts to find best fit, what this will do is actually mirror the parts to try and fit them or make the best use of our space. So if we just go ahead and hit preview, you'll notice that some of these parts have been mirrored now to fit them onto the sheet, but we've still got two that have spilled over onto this sheet over here. So let's look at some of the other options to try and get the best fit and best use of our space. So let's reset the preview and we're going to turn off the option for mirror parts of, uh, to find best fit. And we're going to use this option here to rotate parts to find best fit. And what this will do is rotate the parts according to the step angle that you've defined in this box here. And I'm actually quite happy with that. So let's have a look at what that looks like for now. So let's hit preview. And you'll notice it's rotated some of these that 45 degree angle to try and find the best fit. But we've still got a little bit of spill over here on that sheet. You can see there's still two over here. So let's come back into the step angle and let's look at maybe changing it to see if we can find a better fit. So if we change it to one degree, for example, what this will now do is it will rotate this 60 degrees and try and find the best fit on that area to try and fit around. So I'll keep rotating until it finds that best fit. So if I hit uh, reset preview and just as a note, 
if you're using a particular material, like for example, a, a, a wood that has a particular grain, and you needed your parts to uh, be cut in such a way that the grain was cut in a specific direction, you may not want to change the rotation step angle, but it's just something to note, just in case you are working with that type of material. But let's have a look at the preview now, when we hit uh, preview. And you'll notice now that it's all onto our one sheet. So it's really maximized use of our space there. So you can see how powerful that tool really is when you play around with some of the options. But for now, we're going to look at another example. So let's reset our preview and we'll look at some of the other objects we have over here. So we can come over to these parts, for example, highlight these. You can notice it's got number five in, indicating it's five copies from last time. So we can click preview and the software will do its best to rotate those parts to find the best fit using our rotation step angle that we've defined over here. You notice when they pop them on the sheet, you've got all this empty space over here. So what if you want to use that? Well, we can have a look at maybe creating a boundary that we can use later than to nest into because it'd be a shame to waste all that space. So uh, for now, let's click OK. Let's come out of this form. Let's go to uh, the draw rectangle box. And I'm just going to draw a boundary over here. And now I've got my boundary and I can now use this to try and uh, nest these other parts into. So I'm just going to make that just a tiny bit small. I'm just going to move it over to the right just a little bit. There we are. And we can look at now using some of the other parts to nest within our boundary. So what we're going to do first is go to our uh, boundary box. And we're going to right mouse click, move to layer, new layer. I'm going to call this one boundary. This will come in handy in just a moment. You'll see why. And then we're going to highlight all of our parts. We're going to come over to the nesting tool and we're going to choose this option here to nest boundary. And now we can use that boundary layer we just set up. So we're telling the software we want to nest these parts into uh, the boundary on this layer, which is boundary layer. And I want uh, a couple copies. In this case, I'll make it five. Hit apply. And then we'll click preview. And then what we'll see is that these parts will now be copied five times and put into this boundary. And you can see it's really maximized the use of our waste material here. So we haven't wasted much material, made some much more efficient use of our material, and you can see how powerful that tool really is. But for now, we're going to close out of this, and we're actually going to look at a different example. We're going to look at a example of a two-sided nesting example. So let's go to File, Open, and we'll go to the two-sided example. I'm not going to save the changes to that one. And here we go, we can load in our two-sided example file. So you can see here we've got the top side vectors, which are the drill holes and the outer border here. And on the bottom side, we have these dado-like structures on the bottom side. Now, if you go into the nesting tool, you'll notice that it automatically picked up that it's a two-sided job, which is really handy. So it already knows that we're working with a two-sided job. So we can just highlight these vectors. And you can see the software's picked up that we've got vectors on the bottom side there because it's highlighted them in aqua there and it's also got this outline around uh, all of our vectors so it knows that we've got vectors on the top and the bottom side of uh, this worksheet so let's make a couple copies of that hit apply click preview and you'll notice that it's applied that to both sides so if you see this is the top side i've got all my vectors here and if i flip over to the bottom side it's also nested them on the bottom side as well. So that's a, a good way you can see how you can nest on both sides at the same time. Really handy tool to use. But for now, let's close out this and let's have a look at a different example. So let's come up to File, Open. The Multi-Material Buttons file is one we need. I'm going to save the changes to this one for the moment. And you'll notice that this one has multiple sheets because we're going to learn how to copy across or nest across our sheets. So in this case, I want to take the different parts of my button here and put them on different sheets. So I want to put the base on plywood, the uh, middle in cherry, and I want to cut the uh, center holes of the button in acrylic. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, let's go into the nesting uh, menu and let's highlight the vectors I need for the base, which is the outside vectors here. Of course, check your tool diameter and clearance settings, and these are safe for my machine. I'm going to uncheck the option to remove original parts because I want to keep a copy of the original part on this original layer. Now I want eight copies of this, so I'll put an eight in this field here. And then we want to obviously take these uh, items and copy them across the plywood sheet. But you can see currently the active sheet is layout. So what we need to do is click this customize button here because currently the active sheet is the layout sheet, but we want to copy these to the plywood sheet. So let's have a look at how we do that. So let's click customize. So you can see now the software has opened up the uh, custom sheet selection dialog box where we can then specify the sheets that we want to use for nesting. So 
In this case, we just want to use this drop down here. So if you double click that, and we want to change it to plywood because that's the sheet we want to uh, nest onto. And then we have this option here for quantity. Now, if we double mouse, left mouse click that one, you get the option of one or no limit. Now, no limit is what we've currently been using throughout this job and throughout this video, whereby if you specified the number of copies and that number of copies couldn't fit on your sheet, then the software will automatically create a new sheet for you and it will import those overspilled vectors onto that new sheet. Now, the other option is by specifying one. Now, this will effectively tell the software that I want to use this sheet and this sheet only, and I don't want to spill onto another sheet. For now, however, I'm going to keep it to no limit. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to hit apply on the number of copies, and then hit preview. And you'll notice it's put eight of the uh, nested outlines onto the sheet because the aim is we're going to be cutting the outside of the profile, the inside of these are the pocket, so we can put all the other parts in, if you recall, that I referred to earlier, into these. So when we cut the items out on cherry, we can put them inside of the pocket that we create over here. So let's look at now nesting the other part. So if we go back to our layout sheet, we're going to look at the inside options here. So we need all of these to cut out our pocket for, or cut out our uh, inner part of our button. So you can see over here, the settings are the same. And I want to create eight copies again. So I'll go up to eight copies, uh, click apply, but this time I'm going to come up to customize and I want to put these onto my cherry uh, sheet. So I'm going to set the cherry, no limit again, click OK, hit preview, and then we notice that those inner parts for our button have been put onto the cherry layer. So these are now ready to cut. And then finally we can look at the inner holes for the button, so the inner button parts here. And this time I want to put these onto my acrylic uh, sheet, but you can see here that to the left of it, I've got this scrap acrylic sheet. Now I don't want to really waste all this uh, space here. I could make use of that, so let's cancel out of this, and let's have a look at how we can make use the most of our of our space here. So, if we go up to the draw rectangle tool, and um, we're actually going to draw a rectangle here, and we're going to tell the software that we're making a boundary to nest those parts into. So here we've created a boundary. What we need to do now is put it on its own layer. So if we right mouse click. Move, move to layer, and we'll call this new layer boundary. And then click OK. And then what we can do is go back onto our layout sheet. Then we're going to select our inner holes, open up the nesting tool again. Um, we're going to keep these settings the same. I want eight copies again, but crucially, I want to customize this because I want to put these onto my scrap acrylic uh, sheet. So let's change it to scrap acrylic. Click OK. We want to use our bounds layer, and you can see it's picked up the boundary layer that we've got here because we want to use uh, this boundary to nest these parts into. And then we can hit preview. And you'll notice it's now put all of our inner buttonholes onto the scrap acrylic sheet. But you'll also see that it couldn't quite fit all of them onto that one boundary. So it's put them across onto its uh, another separate sheet. Now you'll notice I've also got this sheet over here, which is the acrylic sheet. And what I would like to do is to have those uh, go onto this sheet instead, because that's the sheet I've got knocking around my workshop. So let's get those onto that sheet. So let's reset our preview. I'm going to go back onto our layout sheet, select our inner holes here. I'm going to come over to customize. And then what we're going to say is we do want to have the holes go across the boundary of that scrap acrylic sheet. Um, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to say we only want it to do as many as it can on that one sheet and then move across to another sheet. And so what we can do there is if we go to the bottom left of this menu and click on this icon here, we can add in another sheet and we can tell it to go to the acrylic and we'll set that one to no limit. So we're effectively telling the software we want you to fill as much as we can on the scrap acrylic sheet and then anything that overspills, could you please put that onto the acrylic sheet? And we'll just make sure that the acrylic sheet is set to no limit. And then if we happen to spill over the uh, acrylic sheet, it will then create a brand new sheet that matches the acrylic sheet, just as we've done in previous examples. So with that, we're ready to go. But if you did ever want to change the order in which the sheets are nested to, you can click one of them and click the up and down arrows over here to change the order in which they're nested to. And you can also get rid of a sheet. So if you need to get rid of one, you can just click this icon here to delete one of these out of this menu. But for now, I'm happy with this. So let's click OK and let's have a look at our settings again. 
I'm happy with my settings here, so I'm going to hit preview and let's look at what, see what we get. So you can see that it's put the parts into that boundary section on the scrap acrylic and it's moved the other parts onto my acrylic sheet. And now my parts are all ready to cut out so I can create my button from the different materials and I can uh, start machining these out. So you can see how powerful uh, the nesting really is. Okay, so with that covered, let's look at a final example which covers how to use filler parts in the uh, nesting menu. So let's go to file, open, and we want our nesting example file. Let's open that back up again and let's have a look at the filler part. So let's select our part, go into the nesting tool and we can choose this option here for filler. Now what this will do is let's say you've got a scenario where you want to fill your uh, sheet with parts but you don't know how many parts you can fit. Well the software if you check this option will automatically calculate that for you and see how many parts it can fit depending on your settings that you set over here and key thing to note you get a little green star to notify that this is a filler part on the 2D view uh, when you go to nest it. So now we've got the filler option uh, selected. Let's hit apply, click preview, and let's see what that looks like. And you can see the software has done its best to fit in the parts, or as many parts as it can, onto the sheet using the settings that we've got over here. So let's just reset the preview, and let's look at another useful tool that you can do in the software. So with the nesting tool, we can combine filler parts to other nested items. So for example, let's say you want 20 of one part and then fill the remaining space with the filler part, you can do just that. So first what we need to do is select our first part. So we come over to this one over here, and I want 20 of these. So let's hit apply, check out the preview for that. So you can see the software's done its best to fit 20 on there. Okay, so let's reset the preview. Now what we're gonna do is select our filler part, come over to the nesting menu, click filler, press apply. You can see that five is turned down to a star. Hold shift, select the other item that we wanted to nest, and then click preview. And then what you will see is that the software has calculated that it wants, I want 20 of one part and then the remaining space I want to be filled with the filler part and it's done just that. So you can see the filler part has taken up the space uh, where the other 20 uh, would not go. And you also have the ability to have multiple filler parts where the software will fill what it can in order of size where it will fill and prioritize the larger items followed by the smaller items. So for example, let's say we want to reset our preview and then we wanted to add this part in the bottom right here to our nesting. Let's click on this part first. Let's put it as filler. Click apply. And you'll notice it has a little star that indicates that it's a filler part. Then we hold shift, select the 20 that we want to put in. And then whilst still holding shift, select our other filler part indicated by the star again. We can click preview. And what you'll see is that the software will put 20 of these onto our sheet but then prioritize the filler parts by size. So this, the larger one uh, will be more prominent and you'll see less of the smaller one because it's prioritized it by size. You can see the uh, filler part that is larger, it's put in first where it can and then where that part can no longer fit, it's put in all the smaller parts. And that concludes our tutorial on how to use the nesting tool.